What's going on y'all, Attorney Tom here. What is proximate cause? As many of you know, I'm a catastrophic personal injury lawyer. What does a catastrophic personal injury lawyer do? Well, I deal with cases that are catastrophic. Think refinery explosions, building collapses, vessel collisions, things like that. But also more importantly, I am now a YouTuber. I never thought this would actually be a thing, but in my new internet persona, my new, not persona, in my new internet status, people have asked me questions, I've seen comments, I've been tagged in videos, and I think there's a fundamental misunderstanding of what causation is, specifically what proximate cause is. So, quick video today, hope it'll be fun, hope maybe we can learn a thing or two, and I'll give you a great example that was actually used in court that may or may not have gotten somebody in trouble, but it's a great example. Okay, so in order to prevail on a negligence theory, you're gonna need four things. Duty, breach of that duty, causation, and damages. I was doing like a weird, that's like the inglorious bastards. Has anybody seen that? It's like, oh, you counted the, the three the wrong way. Okay, moving on. Okay, so this video isn't about duty or breach or damages. It's about causation. There's two types of causation. You need both, but for causation and proximate cause. But for causation is more of a direct link, but really, if you think about it, anything can be a but for causation chain. But for my mother going to law school, she would have never met my dad. But for my mom never meeting my dad, I never would have been born. But for me being born, I would have never made a YouTube channel. But for me making a YouTube channel, you would have never subscribed to my channel. Wow, look at that, boom! Hit you with the subscription deal. Um, so yeah, so you can really make a but for argument for anything, but for my mom going to law school and meeting my dad who is also in law school, is not really the reason why you subscribe to my channel. You subscribe to my channel because my channel provides content worthy of your time and I'm always striving to provide value to you and that's why you're going to subscribe. So if there was just but for causation, you could literally sue for anything because I could make a but for argument for anything. So let's talk about proximate cause. Proximate, proximity. You need a close proximity to the issue, to the negligence alleged in order to prevail on a negligence claim. So how do you prove proximate cause? Well, that's a great question. And there's actually a lot of different prevailing theories on how you prove proximate cause, but I like to think of the saying, when there's smoke, there's fire, right? So generally, you just have to use your best common sense. And I have a great example to show you this. I'm going to prepare for this example by putting a whole lot of paper towels on the floor. Fun stuff, I'll leave some reserves. This was an example shown to me by another lawyer. Said lawyer, this is not myself, but he works with me all the time he's very very good lawyer a fantastic lawyer a plus lawyer literally has tried some of the biggest cases ever and um he did this in the courtroom and it worked got a great verdict the judge got kind of mad at him because he got the courtroom wet here's the example ladies and gentlemen of the jury look at this cup of water Now, obviously I drank from it, but what made this cup of water overflow? Was it the first pour? Was it the second pour? Was it the third pour? Or was it the water that was already in the glass? Okay, let's put this in the example of a real life case. Let's use a trucking case, an 18 wheeler case, okay? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the reason why this collision happened is because the 18 wheeler driver, the defendant ran a red light but it's so much more than just that. Why did he run a red light? He ran a red light because he was tired. He was basically falling asleep at the wheel. Why was he tired? He was tired because his trucking company, the company gave him a rush order. They told him he had 24 hours to deliver something from Houston, Texas to California. Had he drove, and drove nonstop from Houston 
to Los Angeles, he would get there in 23 hours, meaning for that 24 hour period, he had to be driving for 23 hours. He was tired, more so than just that. When he was hired by the trucking company, he did not receive any training. He did not have a commercial driver's license. He had never learned how to drive a car with air brakes or whatever. You get the point. So there's so much more than just running the red light that caused this incident. There was water already in the cup waiting for it to be poured over, which caused the spill. I'm getting, I'm getting, uh, getting, getting pumped up. Mistrial. Not miss trial, I miss trial. And it's important to note that the most important factor in establishing proximate cause is foreseeability. Every single one of those water pours were something that was foreseeable. It's foreseeable that a truck driver who is not trained to get into a collision. It is foreseeable that a truck driver who is tired because he or she was put on a rush job get into a collision because they weren't paying attention. It is foreseeable that someone or a truck driver who runs a red light get into a collision. But think of the cup as the collision, the actual incident that happens. And as you pour water into it, it's essentially a loading bar. And when that loading bar gets to 100%, boom, the collision happens. And in the example I just gave, that's pretty clear cut and dry. The trucking company ran a red light, caused a severe injury. There was a whole bunch of things that led up to it. But this example is actually really, really useful for instances where there may be some contributory negligence. Same sort of facts, but now the plaintiff was on a cell phone, okay? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I represent to you that the trucking company, the trucking defendants, is responsible for more than 51% of the water in this glass. What they're gonna try to tell you is that our client, the plaintiff, is responsible for the poor that caused the glass to tip over. But there's so much more than, than, than just that. They're trying to tell you that the very last pour in the glass contributed to the overflow of the cup, but that's just not the case because had the cup been empty, this would have never overflowed. As I've said before, the driver was untrained. The driver was on a rush job and the driver ran a red light. And my floor is really, really wet. Right, so there you go, proximate cause. So you can kind of see the difference between but for causation and proximate cause causation. But for causation would essentially be the argument that like uh, suing the truck driver's parents for meeting and birthing the truck driver for causing the accident, right? Under but for causation, that's technically correct, right? Because but for the truck driver's parents meeting, the truck driver would have never been born. But for the truck driver being born, he would have never gotten a trucking job. But for the truck driver getting a trucking job, he never would have catastrophically injured my client, right? But proximately, you have to look at the instances. What caused the actual instance the collision and why did it happen it happened because he ran a red light it happened because he was untrained it happened because he was tired because he was put on a rush drop right so all three of those things directly touch they're the nucleus they're proximate causes for the collision so look out for people who make arguments basically just on but for causation right and it doesn't just have to be about law it doesn't have to be about you know what negligence it can be across multiple specters specters spectrums of you know just life and there you go i thought this was an interesting video i took a little bit longer than i wanted my floor is all wet i have to go sue some evil companies see y'all later